this the tree that was leaning towards the house it came out we were able to get a half a day of work done today so we have nine panels up and it's starting to rain right now and it's getting dark so the panels are connected to the purlins with the use of heavy duty metal strapping this is heavy duty tractor strapping some people use it for racking in their houses also very heavy duty It's tied into the 2x4 purlins and into the panels themselves. I was going to use lag screws and washers, but it really creates too much of a gap. And I'm trying to minimize the amount of gap there because I'm going to waterproof this system. Let's see if we can get a little bit of an angle this direction. It's starting to get dark already, so apologize. The video is not so great. And that's what we're looking at there. We still got six, seven, eight, nine left to go. All right, as we take a look at the method that we utilize to put the panels on top of the structure, I'll just make some comments, uh, some things I would have uh, perhaps liked to have tried or done differently, some things that worked and didn't. We decided to go ahead and use the 12 gauge metal strapping. And the reason for that is it minimizes the gap as opposed to using a clamp system or what we were originally planning to use which would have been a 5 16 inch leg screw combined with washers to clamp the panels together actually the 12 gauge metal strapping i have quite a bit of experience using and it's very heavy duty uh, and i have a lot of confidence in it actually i think the four straps on each of the corners of the solar panel is going to hold remarkably well I, I actually almost have more confidence in it than with the leg screws themselves instead of using the leg screws that would have left some rather large gaps that we would have had to try to waterproof and that was not the ideal situation by butting the panels together that leaves a much narrower gap to deal with we originally tried to use a silicone caulking and a silicone acrylic caulking and it just seemed like every time we were trying to waterproof the system it rained in the video you're seeing you're seeing right now it was a nice day out so uh, but the caulk never really had a chance to set up and it just created a mess all over the panels so we ended up cleaning off all the caulk and going with another method that we had already considered and we had already purchased which was the butyl tape it's an rv tape so you can see here it's the ground is wet and it's a wet morning but there's no leaking underneath this this is the premium putty butyl tape the brand that we're using here from rv house this stuff is actually really good and comes in a roll like this this one is uh inch and a half wide if you butt the uh, solar panels up together you should probably use like an inch wide tape or three quarters of an inch tape would be better uh, it's very pliable it's the kind of tape where you punch a hole in the roof of an rv to run wiring you can fill those gaps and patch it with it it works very well now some other methods that i might consider trying for waterproofing perhaps would have been maybe a roofing mastic or a wet patch which comes either in a can and it also does come in caulk tubes uh, another option could have been something like the uh, waterproof repair tape that's also used for roofing you know you cut that down into strips the butyl tape that we utilized was a one and a half inch wide tape now with these particular panels the frame width on them when you butt them up together it would have been more ideal to have uh, either a, say a one inch or maybe even a three quarter inch tape which they sell so i originally bought the inch and a half wide tape thinking i might use that butyl tape to bridge the gap if we use the leg screws in one of the future videos uh, we'll take a look at uh, 
uh, the actual butyl tape on top of the roof itself and what that looks like. I will say though that the butyl tape, once it was installed, that took the most amount of time. Putting up the panels, you can see here in real time uh, how it's going up. It's actually very quick, simple to do with the method that we chose. Obviously, the tractor helps quite a bit. However, you know, the waterproofing quite a bit of the time and effort to do it. Uh, trial and error, different methods, but uh, overall, once the butyl tape was on and it rained overnight, it did not leak at all. So it, it is a very good option uh, if you do go that route. All right, I fast forwarded about two and a half minutes into the video. So putting up the panels with the straps and the screws is a pretty quick and easy way to do it. Now I'm getting ready to go up into the bucket to install the butyl tape. Now that the panels are oriented in this position that you see here, it's easy for me to reach across and install the butyl tape after I put up each panel. So again, it takes way more time to put the butyl tape on than it does for the panel. Now I actually have to take that butyl tape and I cut it in half so it's about a three quarter inch strip. That takes up quite a bit of time also because the tape is very sticky. So again, I suggest getting uh, a three quarter inch tape to start off with and that'll help reduce a lot of your taping time. You could also wait, I guess, until you put all the panels up and strap yourself on and climb on top of the panels. It, it will actually hold me, but you don't suggest it as it's dangerous and you would do that at your own risk. The solar panel project is only one of many projects that we have going on while we have time to spend at this location. We nearly completed the solar racking system and the installation of the panels. However, when we were ready to put up the last two panels, it started raining. We left that for the next trip up there to finish off the last couple panels. Then we'll start moving into wiring the panels, running the conduit, installing the inverters and actually putting the battery packs together so until next time thanks for watching we'll see you then